the British Army will soon begin discontinuing the AS-90 artillery over 30 years old, planning to purchase 116 new self-propelled artillery guns within seven years as part of the approximately $1.08 billion Mobile Fires Platform program. Authorities will begin submitting requests for proposals from next year and select the final bidder by 2025. The new weapon will be deployed in 2029. With shifting types of warfare and important evolutions in technology, the replacement will require much scrutiny from the general staff. But if replacing Britain's howitzers will necessarily be a complex and time-consuming task, it is also an opportunity to reinvigorate the armed forces amidst budgetary cutbacks. The AS-90 the Vickers 155 gun was one of Britain's most recent engineering and business feats. A solo endeavor, it was launched by Vickers on the assumption that competing international programs would eventually fail, which they did. As a result, when the time came for Britain to acquire new artillery, Vickers was able to produce their entrepreneurial baby, while all competitors had only drawings and sketches of theirs. Developed in the 1980s and fielded in the 1990s, the AS-90 has proven an excellent gun. Fitted with 155mm tubes, the howitzers have aged rather gracefully, with several successive upgrades, namely in admissible types of ammunition and digitization, two fields where massive progress was made in recent decades. So, because the platforms are nearing retirement age, and because there is only so much upgrading which can be done on one single vehicle, the Ministry of Defense is starting to work on the next phase. Britain's new heavy artillery had been due to gain initial operating capability in the fourth quarter of 2026, but the mod confirmed that has now been put back to the first quarter of 2029. The Hoetzer procurement delay means the current date for decommissioning the AS-90s has also gone back two years. A portion of the Hoetzer force will now remain operational until 2032. Revised timelines for a new procurement process are currently under development by the mod. An initial request for information was sent to industry in April 2019. The mod issued revised key user requirements in January 2020 with a deadline for industry responses set for February 17. Britain's BAE Systems, South Korea's Hanwood Defense, Israel's Soltham Systems, France's Nexter and Germany's Rheinmetall are among the companies that expressed interest in the program, an industry executive told Defense News on condition of anonymity. Late last year, the Royal United Services Institute think tank in London blasted the British military for its lack of artillery firepower compared with a country like Russia. MFP is one of the British Army's key projects as it looks to modernize following the publication of the Defence Command paper, and the government has earmarked £800 million to be spent on the program over the next decade. Participating in the US trials are Elbit's Atmos 2000, BAE Systems Archer, Nexter's Caesar and Yugo Imports Nora. The trials are set to include a complete analysis of platforms and ordnance. The UK is currently working towards approval of an outlined business case for the program in the first quarter of 2022, with an eye towards a full operating capability of 116 guns in 2032. Initial operating capability for MFP is aimed at 18 guns in early 2029. The MOD has already reviewed and analyzed responses to a request for information from industry and has conducted an analysis of potential investment options. Over the next quarter, the MOD plans to develop the program's procurement strategy and plan the project's future assessment phase. The UK currently operated the AS-90 self-propelled howitzer, which was first introduced into service in the early 1990s. Initially, the British Army operated 179 systems, however by 2017, this had been reduced to 110, reflecting a lack of significant upgrades to the UK's AS-90s. The system is currently scheduled to be retired in 2030. The UK has yet to decide whether the future MFP will be a wheeled or tracked system, and in a recent press briefing, the British Army's head of strategy Brigadier John Clark told reporters that options for the program include upgrading the AS-90 fleet to meet modern threats. After being selected as the sole preferred bidder for an Australian artillery gun procurement project last year, Hanwood Defence aims for its first export to the UK, as the British Army is looking for new self-propelled artillery. With the Agency for Defence Development of South Korea, 
Hanwha Defense is currently conducting multiple performance tests on K9A2 to offer the newest version of Hanwha's best-selling K9 Hoitzer to the British Army. By offering the most advanced version of the K9 and emphasizing local partnerships, Hanwha Defense aims to get an edge over its competitors, Krauss Maffei Wegmans RCH-155, Rheinmetall's HX-3 and BAE's Bofos. Equipped with automatic ammunition loading, the K9A2 will be able to fire 9 to 10 rounds per minute when fully developed, compared to the 6 to 9 rounds currently fired by the K9. Also, K9A2 will require just three soldiers to operate it. The UK's MFP program will be K9A2's first stage to prove its competitiveness overseas, a Hanwha defense official said. The British Army will also spend £250 million upgrades to its M270 multiple launch rocket systems designed to keep the system in service until 2050. Upgrades will see 44 launchers get a new armored cab and upgraded automotive and launch mechanism components. Work on the MLRS will begin in March 2022 and be completed over four years. The vehicles will also be equipped with composite rubber tracks. The UK's MLRS will be capable of firing the US's precision strike missile, PRSM, which has a range of 499 kilometers. The UK and MLRS partners are also developing a guided MLRS extended range, GMLRS or missile that will extend the reach of the system from 84 kilometers to 150 kilometers. The new missile is expected to be in service by 2025 for use by the upgraded launchers. Many options are on the table. Much progress has been made in recent years regarding ammunition, ballistics, propulsion, etc. Range, accuracy, mobility, and performance have basically all increased substantially. The first option would be to turn to the American ally and ask permission to purchase the Paladin. While the machine is indeed outstanding, this would amount to acquiring a newer, better AS-90. As stated above, the quality of the AS-90 was never an issue, only its design. Should we acquire the Paladin or an equivalent, we would once again be stumped for rapid deployment, etc. These types of howitzers are therefore best adapted for nations exclusively involved in border protection, with no expeditionary activity whatsoever. For once, the French may have the solution with the Caesar artillery truck. It boasts the same ballistic performance as other modern howitzers, but at a fraction of the cost. It is also the only unit in this modern category to be combat proven after its successful deployment in the Serval Barkane operation. British military budgets are downsized and will stay so in the foreseeable future. So, how can we buy new artillery, which is sufficiently affordable for us not to need to further reduce our numbers and sufficiently powerful to keep the Royal Army on the map? If we make the wrong choice, we will either be impossible to deploy overseas or we will get there, but with insignificant forces. 20 years ago, this would have amounted to a difficult conundrum. But thanks to recent technological developments, we could have an ace up our British sleeve.